Hi and welcome back to a new video, also rather spontaneous. Today is the Intel Meteor Lake launch. And originally I did not plan to have a video for that, but as you can see, I'm actually holding one of those CPUs in my hand because I just had a visit from Intel Germany and they, pro they brought some really interesting stuff here, which we can take a look at. For example, an Intel Meteor Lake wafer, which is really rare that I'm able to hold it in my hands and to show it to you. That's why we decided to have this video. So Intel Meteor Lake, even though it's not a desktop CPU, it's still bringing some very exciting new features to the market. One of them, or I think the most exciting feature, is the fact that the CPU consists of tiles. So on the bottom of this chip, we have still a normal PCB substrate. On top of that, we have a silicon piece. And on top of that silicon piece, we have the actual tiles. So for example, the compute tile where you have the P cores and E cores, then there is an SOC part, then there's the graphics part, and then there is an IO part. The benefit of doing this is also what basically AMD is doing, is that you can get the best out of the different yeah, tiles you want to utilize. So for example, for the compute tile, this is the first time that Intel is using the new Intel 4 node. But then the SOC part, for example, comes from TSMC. And all the different tiles can come from a different manufacturer. They can be in a different node, but they can still work together. So that is the biggest advantage of that, that you can select all the different tiles from, I would say, the best yeah, source you could think of. Maybe you can see it uh, better this way. So if you pay attention to some of the lines you can see in the chip that looks like basically like a crack. Those are yeah, the borders in between those different tiles. Under the microscope, it's a little bit easier to see. This right here is the compute tile that con contains the P and E cores. On the left, we have the IO area, for example, that contains the PCIe. If we go further down, that would be our SOC tile. And then the bottom right here would be the graphics unit. And the surrounding area, the gray that you can see right here, that is the additional silicon chip, which has active circuit that sits underneath. And on left and right and surrounding the white and yellowish part right here, that is the underfill that protects the chip while it sits on top of the PCB. That's what we can see here. So that's what we just inspected underneath the microscope. And since this is a mobile CPU, and on the back side, we can see those solder bumps that form the connection to the motherboard of your notebook, for example. In the center, we also have some tinier SMD capacitors. One more cool thing Intel showed us today is, well, the CPU we have on the left, that's the one we already looked at. And this is basically the CPU taken apart. So the PCB that contains all those very tiny solder bumps in the center, that's the grayish area right here. And here we have the chip, the chip that contains all the tiles. And if I flip it around, you can see it contains exactly the same stuff to form the connection on the PCB. This would be the same area again under the microscope. And you can even see through those, yeah, the layout of the solder bumps where the location of the parts are. So for example, this would be the E core area, P cores right here. And also on the left, you would have uh, the area of uh, the IO chip. And if you pay attention to the scale right here, which is two millimeter for the size, you can guess how tiny those bumps are. I also checked and measured it. You can see it's about 60 micrometers on diameter, which is basically the same as the diameter of a human hair. Florian from Intel, as I said earlier, brought some very nice toys to us. And I'm trying not to drop it. That is a Meteor Lake wafer. So hundreds of potential Meteor Lake CPUs. And now the insane thing is that we can even take the wafer out of the box. It is very difficult to catch this on camera to get the beauty of this wafer, but I hope you can see it a little bit. Uh, all those reflections with those uh, beautiful colors, it's insanely nice to see. The reflections are so heavy, it's so difficult to film that we decided to again put it underneath the microscope and then we can see the colors in more beauty. Now to give you an orientation again, those uh, three parts right here, so these and those three on the left, those are the P cores. These are E cores, E cores. And then we have those areas in front of the P cores. That's the cache of the P core. And the long thing in the center that you can see is basically the ring bus that is connecting everything for the data communication. 
And uh, of course, we did die shots before, and it's not the first time I'm seeing such beautiful images, but it's different. Like having this natively made from the factory just looks so much better than, than a die shot with uh, like, you know, etching residues and stuff that is just a completely different level. And again, for your orientation, that is just one chiplet. And after the production, after everything is done with the layering, it will be cut into the, in, the individual dies, the, the pieces. And because I never had a, a wafer in this form in my hands, I didn't realize or notice that in between, in this line where they perform the cut, there are some, I don't know, there are some things. I think we have to zoom in. Now you see all those rectangles, um, even with uh, different colors. And even though I don't have no clear information about it, so I can just speculate, but I mean, they have to be there for a specific reason. And I would assume they are there for some sort of pre-testing, maybe after the manufacturing or during the manufacturing process to test specific parts of the CPU, maybe. They could be contact pads for some reason, because I mean, afterwards, they would just cut through here. but. They are definitely there for a reason. Again, this is the area in between the chips. Uh, pay attention to those black pieces and the red ones. And we just realized if you zoom in step by step, then the color even changes of these areas. That's just because of the different uh, reflection of the light. And you can see this is pretty tiny because this scale right here is 25 micrometers. So I would say, yeah, this is about 25 micrometers, really small. And here looks like some kind of tiny cells or something crazy. One more thing which we'll quickly look at are those CPUs. You probably remember Sapphire Rapids. We did a lot of content around those CPUs. And that is basically Sapphire Rapids Refresh, also called Emerald Rapids. Just server CPUs, not workstation yet. Not sure if they will make workstation CPUs out of this or not. Would be cool, maybe for Project Irrationality 2.0 or something. But let's quickly take a look at the CPU first before we also look at the wafer of this, which we also are able to look at. The CPU is very similar to the Sapphire Rapids CPU, we, which we deleted also like a year ago. If you remember that, Sapphire Rapids contained out of four um, different tiles. This is only two tiles, but it's 64 cores total, which is completely insane. Um, there's also additional chip in the bottom left. If I remember correctly, this should be an FPGA, um, but I'm not quite sure. So if that's incorrect, then maybe let me know in the comments. Apart from that, you will notice the nice and shiny gold layer on top of uh, the chips. That's the preparation for soldering process, because obviously that's just a CPU to show off. But if you would buy it like the retail version, then you would have the indium layer on top and then the heat spreader on top. And that's the Emerald Rapids wafer. Again, beautiful reflections. I also did a quick calculation. It's about 70 um, pieces, maybe 80 on uh, this wafer. Whereas on the Meteor Lake wafer, we had a, like maybe 500. That's why in theory, the yield rate is always worse on a wafer with those big chips, which is definitely also always increasing costs of an individual tile. So that's it, um, very spontaneous, but I think pretty interesting video of pretty CPUs and wafers. So thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.